Hello, and thanks for tuning in. This is Giving and Gabbing, the podcast all about fundraising success, brought to you by GiveGab, where we make it incredibly easy for fundraising professionals to be great at their jobs. Hi, I'm Karen, the marketing coordinator here at GiveGab. Welcome to today's episode of Giving and Gabbing, which features our special guest, Megan Gibbon, who hosts the Give Local York Giving Day in York County, Pennsylvania. Give Local York celebrated their fourth annual Giving Day this year on May 7th, raising over $3.7 million for local nonprofits. Megan and her team of volunteers are continuously showcasing participating nonprofits in creative ways, and they do a wonderful job of highlighting the generosity of their community to spark more engagement. Joining me from GiveGab, we have Kelsey, our project director, with over eight years of experience in fundraising. Kelsey, do you want to say hi? Hi, everyone. I'm super excited to be here, and uh, yeah, just excited to be a part of this podcast. Thanks, Kelsey. Throughout this past year, Kelsey has worked really closely with Megan and her team as they continue to grow their Giving Day efforts on our platform. In this episode, we'll be diving into how Give Local York coordinated their May 7th event, which accommodated both in-person and virtual attendees in meaningful and engaging ways. And with that, we'll jump right into our first question with Megan. Could you share a bit about the history of Give Local York, what maybe inspired your community to host that Giving Day, and what your initial goals were? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so York County, Pennsylvania um, is located in, in South Central PA, uh, just north of, of the Maryland line, really. Uh, we have a population of um, just over 400,000 people, and we have um, a very generous community, uh, tons of nonprofits who are doing lots of uh, really great work for the community. And um, our giving day really started kind of out of, <laughs> out of envy. Um, there is a, a neighboring community uh, just ac across the river, not far from us, you know, 20 miles away that's called Lancaster County. Um, and if you're familiar with Parks and Recreation, or park, the show, uh, we have uh, a very Pawnee-Eagleton relationship, uh, York being the Pawnee in this situation. So, you know, Lancaster is, is a little more uh, posh. They have, uh, you know, a higher uh wealth than we do they have an amtrak train so they have accessibility to philadelphia and new york and and we always kind of have a chip on our shoulder here in york county so um in 2012 lancaster started doing their give day um it's put on by the lancaster county community foundation it's called the extraordinary give uh they work with give gab and um it's it's a huge day it's amazing success and so in 2012 um, I was actually working in marketing. I was working with some nonprofits who were participating in that give day. Um, I was kind of like, what's this? We're raising a million dollars in a day. It was a huge deal. Um, and so there was sort of a group of us on our side of the river who were saying to our philanthropic anchors, you know, why aren't we doing a giving day? Why is this not happening here? Uh, we have a generous community. We have the need. We have these amazing nonprofits. Why is this not happening? Um, and what really, you know, the answers that we were getting is we couldn't find a home for it. Um, our York County Community Foundation didn't really feel, feel like a giving day fit into their business model um, or something that it was, it wasn't something they were looking to do. Um, our United Way already has a huge successful annual campaign. Um, so no one was really willing to take this event on. So what ended up happening is um, there's a group of nonprofit leaders in York County who have all gone through this same fellowship program um, that was started by a local philanthropist. Um, it's called the York Federal Fellows, and it provides nonprofit leaders um, with funding for personal and professional development um, in, in their career. Um, and so what has happened is that now there are 60 plus fellows who have gone through this program together. Um, and it was those group of nonprofit leaders with the support of that philanthropist that said, fine, if no one else is going to do it, we're going to do it. We'll, we'll have a giving day by nonprofits for nonprofits. Um, and so in 2017, uh, they reached out to me um, and it was sort of like, all right, loudmouth, you've been talking about this for five years. We're going to do this now. Um, you have to quit your job and run this thing. Um, and, and essentially, that's how it ended up happening. So we had our first um, giving day. We had Give Local York um, on May 4th, 2018. 
we had a goal of raising a million dollars. Um, and really that was just kind of, I don't wanna say arbitrary, but we wanted to show people that we, we meant business and a million dollars sounded like a really big number. So we came out and said, we're raising a million dollars, we're gonna do this. Um, and we did, uh, we raised $1.2 million that first year. And so, you know, sort of planted our flag and said, we're, we're doing this and we're here to disrupt um, philanthropy in York County um, and have been finding ways to do that ever since. I love that. That is, that's so casual, you know, just a million dollars. Yeah, it was, you know, <laughs> see what we can do. <laughs> no, I think that's wonderful. And then it was by nonprofits for nonprofits. It's a really, um, it's really cool to listen to and inspiring. Um, can you talk a little bit about how working with GiveGab since 2018 with you know, your project managers has attributed to the success of Give Local York? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I am, I'm a staff of one. Um, we sort of, you know, retroactively built an organization after we held our first give day. We were sort of like, oh, that worked. We should probably, you know, put some pieces together to figure this out. Um, so we are, you know, we, we got our nonprofit status. Um, our organization is actually called the White Rose Leadership Institute, um, with Give Local York being our signature event. And that York Federal Fellows Program that I had mentioned before also now lives sort of under our roof. Um, but I am, um, it's just me. Uh, with, you know, my volunteer board of directors, and then I have, you know, really great volunteers who help every give day um, to, to make that happen. Um, but throughout the rest of the year, uh, you know, I, it's me uh, fundraising to, to produce the event, to build the stretch pool, um, to do all of the sort of administrative kind of stuff. Um, and working with Kelsey specifically and GiveGab is, it has been amazing um, because of the resources that you provide, not only to your, your giving day partner, but to the nonprofits as well. Um, so the first year that, that we put on Give Local York, um, we worked, am I allowed to say their name? We worked with Kimbia. We worked with, with another company uh, who, who then became GiveGab, um, but we didn't have the, that same level of resources. So I was actually putting together my own trainings for the nonprofits and running these webinars and, you know, trying to come up with social media guides and, and all of these kind of things. And it was just a tremendous amount of work um, and not nearly to the level of what, what GiveGab provides. So um, it, it, you guys make it really easy um, for all of the sort of pieces that have to come together to, to pull that day off. Um, and then on the day itself, uh, Kelsey is really sort of like my saving grace. Like she <laughs> keeps me sane and handles all of the technical stuff on the back end. Um, and that's, you know, one less thing that I have to be worrying about in this crazy flurry of, of our 24 hour give. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really give Gab's another is a member of our team, I would say, and Kelsey, you know, I count her right in there with, um, with the, the team of folks who, you know, help pull this off and, um, keep me from going crazy once a year. And I would just say that we love being a part of the Give Local York team. I know that I'm not allowed to have favorite giving days, but um, York is right up there with uh, one of the ones that I root the loudest for. Um, and I tell people all the time, Megan, like, you know, I think our hat goes off to you and being a single person running, you know, a giving day, you are the master of delegation and the master of like, really focusing your efforts on where it's needed most. And I think having that ability to like take that stand back a little bit um, has really helped. And I think it's an incredible leadership style that I love being able to watch and see and be a part of. So, yeah. Um, so you just celebrated your fourth annual Give Local Your campaign, which was super exciting. I had a lot of fun, um, so you know, working with you guys. Um, I'd love to hear how this, uh, you know, community-focused event has grown throughout the years, and where your priorities and kind of strategies have shifted over those last four years. Yeah, you know, so when we did this for the very first time, um, it was almost like we had to to create a proof of concept. We had to, to show the community. Um, what we already knew going going into this is is the impact that a that a giving day can have on a community. Um, you know, not only in dollars raised, but um, in the capacity building that it provides to nonprofits, in engaging new donors, in um, really building community morale, all of those pieces. And so, the first year for us, it was really sort of just about proving. I don't want to say proving people wrong, but you know, like saying like this, this works, let us show you how this works and, and, and we're going to do it. Um, and then once, once we pulled that off, it was like, okay, uh, now what? So, 
you know, we, we really sort of focus back to think about why we wanted to do this day in the first place and, and what we really wanted it to do for our community. Um, and so we set, you know, a few different intentions and sort of um, parameters for our day as we grew it. Um, we very much wanted this day to be inclusive, um, period, but inclusive for um, all types of nonprofits, um, to not, not um, notwithstanding your, your size or your seniority, um, your operating budget, we wanted this to be a, um, a day that any you know, nonprofit organization could, could be a part of. Um, because we are a grassroots sort of organization putting this on ourselves, we do have a registration fee that goes into the production of the event. Um, but we, with a sponsorship uh, partner, we offer a scholarship. To, to organizations so that it's not a financial burden for any organization to, to be a part of it. And that was really important to us from the start. Um, also being very inclusive of donors. Um, you know, we, we headed into this, we, we set our minimum donation um, relatively low comparatively to other give days around us. So in the first two years, I wanna say, our minimum donation was just $10. Um, during the pandemic, we decided to lower that down to five. Um, again, to make it really easy for people to be able to give. Um, we allowed for offline gifts from the beginning to allow for folks who weren't comfortable using a credit card or who didn't have a credit card. Um, basically, we wanted this day to be about connecting people with who had passions uh, for a cause um, and to make it really, really easy for them to support that cause. Um, and we very much wanted this day to be about shining a spotlight on our nonprofits. So our entire approach leading up to the Give Day, the storytelling is really about those organizations and the work that they're doing and helping people recognize their neighbors who are receiving these benefits and who are connecting with these organizations. Um, so that was all really baked in from the start. We also decided um, after that first year that we we didn't want to focus on a financial goal so much anymore. Um, the the dollars raised is amazing and of course is so needed, but for us it's really about growing philanthropy in York County and bringing more people into the process of being able to support organizations. Um, so we started setting a donor goal. Um, you know, we wanted to see ten thousand donors. We wanted to see eleven thousand donors. Um, we wanted to see more people engaged in this process. Um, and so as we you know, market and, and promote and, and seek sponsorships, those are really the things that, that we're leading with. That's the message that's at the core of it. For us, it's about celebrating nonprofits and sending that message that anyone can be a philanthropist and support a cause that they care about. Got it. Thanks so much for that insight. Um, looking a little more about from one year to the next, and specifically 2020 and 2021, um, what were some of the biggest takeaways from your 2020 Give Day regarding community engagement? And how did those influence your planning for this year's Give Local event? Yeah, so our event takes place um, in May. It's always the first Friday in May. Um, we were very, again, intentional about selecting that as our date. Um, because uh, when we had first started this, we, we plugged into sort of this nationwide kind of um, cadre of giving days that was taking place, um, the, the give locals, you know, give local whatever um, that were taking place in May. Um, and we thought, you know, that sounds good. We'll, we'll hop in there. Um, but we chose First Fridays um, because in York, uh, First Friday is, is sort of like a community holiday already. Our downtown sort of shuts down its streets and there's kind of a street fair atmosphere. And so we wanted to piggyback on that. Um, so, you know, our, our giving day is in May. Um, obviously, things started to, uh, the world kind of turned upside down in, in March um, of 2020, and we were, we were kind of faced with, uh, with some decisions to make. Um, you know, luckily for us, uh, Give Local York has primarily always been an online giving day in terms of the mechanism for giving. Um, we have really great public um, and community activities that go along with that. Um, but the the mechanics of the day, you know, could could still absolutely go on um, because that we're, we're all online anyway. Um, but we had already made the decision um, to add a live stream component into our day. Um, I had actually connected with um, some other giving days at the GiveGab Leaders Forum in 2019 um, and was introduced to a really great uh, live stream consultant. 
uh, Chris Strub, the Giving Day guy who was working with, with some other Giving Day communities. Um, and I was really interested about um, in adding that live stream component um, into our Give Day because we see a lot of success and engagement on our social media. Um, a lot of the conversation is, is happening there. And I wanted to find a way to really enhance that um, in addition to the other things that we were doing. So um, it was kind of present, you know, that we had that we had laid that groundwork. Um, we had already planned to have a live stream happening. Um, so we had uh, we didn't have as much difficulty making that pivot in 2020 um, from a from a logistical standpoint. One of the things that I was kind of surprised by um, and, and that we had to fight against was more of a philo philosophical standpoint. We had a, a lot of folks who questioned whether the time was right for a give day in May 2020 um, and who questioned if we should be asking folks for money, um, you know, given that a lot of people were, were losing their jobs um, and, you know, uh, finances were, were so finances were um, insecure and unstable and, and so many things were, were unstable. And so we had a lot of questions about whether we should go forward with the give day, um, but we decided to do it because um, people needed nonprofits during that time more than ever. And our nonprofits certainly needed their, their support more than ever. Um, and so when we went into 2020's Give Day, um, I'll say it was a bit of a question mark for me. I said, you know, what, we're going to we're going to do it. Um, you know, we have a really strong supportive community. Let's just, you know, let's see what happens. And, um, you know, if if everything fails, <laughs> we can say, well, you know, pandemic, what are you going to do? Um, so it was kind of, uh, you know, it was kind of that that fail safe uh, for us. But our community turned out. Um, in droves. And, you know, we saw a huge increase in giving um, that year, uh, both in terms of the number of donors and in, in the amount of dollars raised. And again, that was with lowering our minimum donation to just $5. Um, so we still saw that growth. And, and what that said to me is that, you know, our community understands the important work that these nonprofits are doing. And they essentially voting with their dollars are saying, we want you to be here. We, we appreciate what you're doing for our community and, and we need this now more than ever. Um, and that was a, a key piece of feedback that we heard afterwards was how much that day was needed um, to remind people that, you know, even at that time we, we were definitely separated and isolated, um, but we came together as a community that day and people still felt like we were together. So, you know, we we had the live stream piece, we had folks sort of calling in. It was like an old fashioned telethon, uh, you know, kind of. And that's that was was really cool. Um, and so, you know, as we headed into 2021, still not sure what we were going to be able to do in terms of um, public meetings and, and having events and activities, um, we knew that we could still be really successful in a completely online format. Um, so that was not as scary, um, but you know we're really missing that piece of, of being back together. So um, what we ended up putting together for 2021, because things were, were still kind of tentative at that time, um, was sort of a hybrid approach. So we didn't go full out first Friday, 10,000 people you know, milling around our downtown and um, you know, uh, uh, just open access to everybody. Um, but what we did instead was held a nonprofit showcase um, at our uh, local Atlantic League baseball stadium so that it was an outdoor um, event. We made it um, invite only, but invite in terms of inviting all of the nonprofits and their supporters and our sponsors, you know, could come and be a part of this. And then we had different organizations um, perform or speak or show off or, or do whatever um, for our live stream audience. Um, we also had um, I, I, ha I have to ask Chris officially, we had at least 12 hours of full live stream programming throughout that day that was really set up with nonprofit interviews and different demonstrations. Um, some folks came to us at the stadium, which was kind of our home base. Uh, some folks, you know, remoted in from wherever they were. Um, and so it was really that that hybrid approach. Uh, we were still together in, in, in person, some of us in, in safe, socially distanced ways, um, but still connect, connecting with the community at large through their screens um, and uh, their social media. Awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, it just, it was such uncertainty going into 2020. I'll never forget, like, 
And how weird it felt for me having been in person there for the first time for my first Give Local York in 2019 to be, you know, working with your team via Zoom, you know, through the night on 2020. Uh, but I think you guys really did an absolutely incredible job, you know, really kind of like pivoting and, you know, changing things up and kind of moving forward. So uh, that being said, I think we'd love to hear like what new things you're excited to try and what the results were from that, you know, in kind of your transition to a hybrid model from going completely virtual to, you know, 2021 when it was a little bit of both, you know, making sure that you still were able to keep people safe, but, you know, bring back some of the really incredible in-person celebrations and enthusiasm and excitement that comes with Give Local York. Because I, I I can tell you walking through the streets of York County in 2019, it was just like, you know, the amount of excitement and, you know, joy and happiness and just philanthropy you could feel in the community was incredible. So, you know, I'd love to hear kind of what that, um, you know, what that is kind of transitioned to. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I mean, from, from a from a metric standpoint, um, from the numbers standpoint, I mean, it was a very successful year. Um, we we outraised what we had raised in in 2020. Um, so we we raised um, you know 3.7 million. Uh, we had more than 11,000 donors. Um, you know, so so checking all the boxes, you know, it was fantastic. Um, one of the the best parts for me after a give day, after I've had time to well to to rest and to rehydrate. Um, usually, you know, by that Sunday or Monday, I'll take several hours and just kind of scroll through social media um, and catch up on all the things that I missed when I was there, you know, sort of in the trenches. Um, and that's when I really get to see sort of the true reach of, of the Give Day and, and how everyone is celebrating across the county. So, you know, you're seeing these these um, activities happen or these, these conversations that are happening that I, that I didn't even know about. Um, and, and that is really amazing. And that, you know, obviously continued this year in 2021. Um, my, what I really hope happens with Give Local continues to happen is, you know, I, I want this to be a day that belongs to the community. Um, and it's a day that they take and make it into whatever they, they want it to be. Um, so, you know, we essentially, from, from my standpoint, is we provide, you know, the platform through GiveGab. Um, we provide um, a, a good amount of the promotion um, and, uh, and, you know, help to coordinate some of these activities that are happening. But otherwise, you know, it really is, it's, it, it's Give Local York Day, um, whatever you want to do with, with your employees, um, with your students, with your faith community, you know, we, we see these sort of pockets of um, celebrations opening up all over. Um, I saw businesses that were rate, uh, having fundraisers for organizations that I knew nothing about. And that's amazing. Um, you know, it shows how, how many, how long the legs can be of this thing. Um, and, and that's really what it is, you know, for me is that I, I want to sort of create this idea that can be taken on um, and, and grow. And that's, you know, what we're always looking to, to continue to do. So, you know, as I head into 2022, um, it is about that time when I start reaching out to people to say like, hey, can you believe it? We're, we're back again. Um, one of the areas that I have really pinpointed last year as a growth area um, was, was business fundraisers. Um, we have a very dedicated, um, you know, corporate and business community um, but again, you know, I, as one person, uh, I'm, I'm not really able to engage with all of them or get them on board. Um, so what I was actually able to do is um, we have a, a great organization here called Leadership York um, that, that uh, trains community members how to be good board members um, and really engages the, uh, the business community with the nonprofit community. Um, and so I was able to work with a team that was going through a leadership program. They needed a, um, you know, a community service project. Um, and their community service project was to try to seek out business fundraisers for Give Local York. Um, that went really well. Um, and that's an area that I'm looking to, to continue to grow um, because I, I see you know, this as an opportunity, not only to help raise more dollars and engage new donors, um, but as a way for, for our businesses to get more engaged in the community. You know, we, we see all of these numbers that, that talk about specifically um, millennials and, and younger folks um, when it comes to their satisfaction in their job, um, a lot of it has to do with how engaged they feel in the community um, and how much interaction their business has in the community. Um, you know, so this is a real economic development tool. Like it's not, you know, there it, it does so much more than, than just raise millions of dollars on this day. Um, 
And so business fundraisers is a piece I'm really looking to grow. We've also the past two years um, put a lot of focus on peer to peer fundraising. Um, and that's an area too, you know, that that um, I can see our efforts paying off and, and continue to grow every year, um, you know, looking for ways to help our organizations help their fundraisers um, be engaged. Um, and, and that's another piece of this is that, you know, the skills that they that our organizations learn from participating in Give Local York, whether it's through, you know, the webinars and trainings provided by GiveGab or, you know, some of the things that, that we're doing along the way are teaching them these skills um, and helping them build their capacity so that they can put those things in place all year long. It's not just about Give Day. This is really helping them learn how to better engage with with donors and, and potential donors um, and to really steward them through the process. Um, that's been really cool too, is you know, once we put all this push on, on live streaming and engaging on social, I've seen tons of our participating organizations now use that all year through. So, you know, they're doing live stream at their different events or, you know, from, from a staff activity that they're doing, um, you know, really showing who they are as people and engaging with our community through the screens, uh, because that's, you know, that's how we're going to have to do it for a bit, it looks like. Right. I think all of that, I mean, all of the engagement, I love your plans for the future with business fundraisers and how much the community is just kind of taken charge and gets involved and that you said you didn't even, you weren't even aware of certain people being involved and, and coming out of the, the work to, to really promote the day. And so that's really incredible to hear. I'm curious, since you tried this hybrid approach, you know, as we do, as we see uh, organ organizations, communities opening up a little bit more, if you see the hybrid approach continuing into the future, um, what you might do differently, um, if you would continue doing that at all, just your thoughts around that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think for, for Give Local York, um, hybrid is, is definitely gonna be the way that, that we continue to do it. Um, even if our in-person activities get back up to 2019 levels, um, and, and when I say 2019 levels, we literally had 10,000 people downtown. Uh, we had 75 nonprofits who were out, you know, either with fire trucks or animals playing pickleball. Like it, it people dressed up in costumes. It was insane. Um, and uh, but even coming out of 2019, out of that craziness, I had engaged someone to help with live stream because I knew that it could take it to that next level. Um, so I think that that's always going to continue to be a component of, of what we're doing, um, because, again, it goes back to that that in inclusivity from the beginning. You know, we want to be able to reach everyone where they are. York County um, is, is a very large county. So, you know, while we have all that fun and activity going on, you know, right in the heart of our downtown, we have communities all around that um, that maybe, you know, don't get to feel that same engagement. So, um, you know, the live stream is really that piece that helps tie it all together. Um, that and, you know, we, we do a lot on, on Facebook and um, on Instagram and taking advantage of the, the live um, capabilities that they have on that. Because again, it really is about feeling like you're together and feeling like you're a part of something um, that has really moved the needle on this day. Um, so, you know, I think, what might change, you know, as we would head into 2022, if we are able to get back more into um, these these in-person events, um, what I would like to see is taking advantage of the live stream to sort of go remote to those various locations and to, you know, to tie it all together so that people can see truly how, how big this is and that we are reaching, you know, all corners of the county um, and to give a better picture of, you know, who York County is and, and who these folks are. Um, and so that's, a, you know, a really important a tool for us that that's what it's about. And um, I think it just adds to that sort of fun party atmosphere. Um, what we've also, you know, learned and, and heard anecdotally is, you know, uh, people, uh, what, what I would like is for Give Local York to be a holiday in York County, right? Like I want employers to, to let their people off of work that day. And, you know, because from what we hear, people aren't doing much work that day anyway, like they're they're glued to their screen and they're watching the ticker go up and they're watching on social media. Um, so it is a way to engage people, you know, if, if they're stuck at their desk that day, they can still feel like, like they're part of it. So until we get that holiday declaration, um, you know, the, the live stream and the hybrid components, just another way to, to keep the party going all day long. 
I love that idea. It definitely feels like a holiday in York um, on that day. So I feel like it's only suiting. And I really do love the idea of like bringing more, you know, by using that remote model, reaching to the many corners of York and showcasing, you know, because there's just only so much you can see, right? You're one person with one set of eyes, but the more you can really like highlight the amazing work being done all across the community, I think you're really gonna help, you know, continue that goal of engaging more and more donors and more and more people that have some sort of connection or tie to York County that makes them wanna be a part of this incredible day. So with that, I'd love to hear like, what advice you'd consider giving to other Give Day hosts, um, considering, you know, either hosting a hybrid event or, you know, again, moving forward with this idea of, you know, leveraging both models to be inclusive and, you know, host a giving day through that lens. Yeah. Um, you know, you touched uh, before on the fact that um, that I have to delegate a lot, right? Like um, you, you and your team are uh, you know, you, you have things that you're focusing on on that day. Um, so for me, you know, the things that really helped us pull all of this off was finding the, the right people or the right teams um, who could help uh, take that piece off of us. Um, in my case, it was Chris Strub. Um, in, in your various communities, I'm sure you have uh, folks who have, you know, really uh, dove into to the live streaming piece of it. Um, I'm sure, you know, I could have learned how to live stream and, and tried to, to do that. And I know, you know, on j just using your Facebook uh, or, you know, your phone, uh, that is one way to do it. But I'll, I'll say that's going to add a whole level of stress into your life that you don't need uh, added on, on Give Day. Um, so if you can find a team who can help you um, and who understands, you know, your vision and what you're trying to do, um, to, to take away all of that technical stuff. So you don't have to worry about, you know, who's who's coming in at this point and who's getting off of here and, and what if my internet dies and, and all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, finding a live stream partner um, who can take care of the technical aspects was huge for me. Um, we also work with um, a partner uh, here in town um, for the for the live event portions of it too. Um, and, and pulling that that piece of it together. So um, in, in our town, it's uh, it's actually our, our, our baseball team. Uh, they have a whole sort of event arm uh, because they do a lot of events and parades and those sort of things in our community. Um, so able to work with them um, for for that in-person piece of it because um, there's a lot that that goes into it. You know, you have to put out barricades and help people set up and figure out where to park and all of that kind of stuff. Um, that again, like you don't need um, on added on to what you're already trying to do with your give day. Um, so, so putting those those team members into place um, and finding people you can trust is is really important. Um, I would say, you know, I always say rem remembering at the start what what your goal is and what your vision is, and having that really dictate the plan that you lay out from there. Um, you know, so so we go into this wanting this to be, um, you know, a celebration, a spotlight on the nonprofits and a way to um, engage new donors. And so that, you know, sort of dictates how we lay out our, our giving day um, and our live stream. So we want it to feel fun. We want that fun to be felt through the screen. We want it to be an opportunity for our nonprofits to come on and talk about the work that they're doing and to be able to, to toot their own horns um, because they get very few opportunities to do that. Um, and then we we want to, you know, meet people where they are um, and, and be there when they, you know, sign on Facebook um, or, uh, you know, are scrolling through their Instagram feed. So we're trying to find ways to, you know, to engage people where they are and to uh, remind them that it is give day if they don't somehow, you know, know already. Um, I used to joke. So uh, I have planned a lot of community events throughout my life. And um, after every single event, you know, there was always at least one person on Facebook who was commenting like, I wish I knew this was happening or something, you know, like that. And so my goal with this is like, I don't want anyone to be able to say, oh, had, what, what was Give Local York? Had no idea. Um, because even if they're only hearing about it on that day, they still have time to be a part of it and to give. So, um, you know, there's no excuse. It's, it's, I want it to be all encompassing and I want people to be like, yes, I get it. I know it's give day. Thank you. I already gave. So, yeah. 
I love that. I actually remember you, I remember you saying that at Giving Day Leaders Forum like a couple of years ago, um, about how you wanted everyone to know about it. And I remember, I think I was about to lead the Giving is Gorgeous charge that year. And I was just like, oh, taking mental notes. Like Megan has a lot of great ideas. So yeah, just, <laughs> just inundate people with it, you know? Yeah, I love um, it. The other, you know, and to that point, um, you know, one of the ways this goes along with that that idea of sort of giving the day to the community, um, you know, also giving the day to your nonprofits um, in terms of having them take part of the promotion, right? Like there's only so much that we can do. We have a limited budget and, and we reach out to all of our, you know, media partners and we have billboards and radio and TV spots and print ads and all of that. But you know, we really encourage all of the organizations to also do that too. Um, you know, you can't you can't do too much. So we want people's mailboxes to be flooded that week before give with everybody's postcards. So they're like, oh, okay, yes, I get it. Um, and that's how you really get that growing effect. Just like with with peer fundraisers, um, you know, if the organizations are also out there doing those same things, and we really train them, um, you know, in how to market and how to how to reach people. Um, so that, you know, if we're all doing it together, that's where you have that huge impact. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I'm curious to know, since you have such success with engaging your organizations to um, especially come down when you had that big celebration and 10,000 people, and that's incredible um, support and there's a lot of people coming out. I'm curious how you rally them and how you get so much engagement. Um, if you could speak to that a little bit. I imagine part of it is because this Giving Day came out of, it, it arose from nonprofits wanting that to be a, be a thing. But yeah, if you could talk a little bit about how you spark that engagement, that would be great. Yeah, sure. I mean, I do think, you know, that that um, our origin story played a huge part in that, you know, the fact that it is this by nonprofits for nonprofits. Um, the uh, the York Federal Fellows at the time that we started uh, were uh, 60 strong. So we had 60 sort of ringers, you know, if you will, already going into this who had said, like, yes, we're going to do this. Our organizations are on board um, and they really helped us. Um, you know, sort of spread the word to, to other organizations and, and to, to reach out to them um, and to, to, you know, to make a case for it. Um, we've, of course, you know, every year seen more organizations join on board who saw us, you know, the year before. Uh, it never fails, you know, some organization will reach out like on give day to be like, hey, how can I get in on this? And I'm like, well, okay, so like, let's get you on board uh, for next year. Um, and I think a lot of that really is um, because I am such a pain in the butt um, to the organization. So we start, we open our registration in November um, for our May giving day. Um, I will, you know, start reaching out to organizations probably in October to be like, this is coming, like it's happening again. Um, and then I engage with the organizations every week once they're on board. I send out um, a weekly email that um, talks about, you know, up, upcoming media opportunities or different promotional things that we have for them. Um, I try to share like my hot tip of the week of like what they should be focusing on right now. Um, like if I were you, I would be, uh, you know, engaging my board this week or I would be putting together a, a phone list, um, that sort of thing. Um, and so I think, you know, that's a piece of it is that like I'm just harping on them all the all the time and they're like, OK, we, we get it. Um, so persistence is probably, you know, like the, the key message uh, that I give here. But we also. Um, we really see this as an opportunity for the nonprofits to, um, to work together um, and, and to, to collaborate, not only hopefully for Give Day, but then beyond. So we've seen a lot of um, new sort of alliances form geographically based on where they are in, in sort of these neighborhoods or based on um, like service industry or populations that they're serving. So when we're able to be in person, we do try to, um, to host uh, sort of more social events to get them together. So we've had, um, you know, in, in years when we were together, we would host some happy hours where they would just, you know, come out um, and chat with each other. We've hosted some um, in-person panel discussions where we've invited in some, um, you know, giving day superstars, either from the extra give community or from, from our own and, and had them sort of share their approaches and, and some tips. Um, this past year we did, um, we did sort of webinar happy hour, uh, you know, Zoom happy hours, if you will, and invited in um, some folks from Lancaster to talk about their approach and and um, 
and how, you know, how they do their give days. And um, so that engagement and, and that relationship building is, is really important uh, because on the day itself, um, I, I don't think anyone, you know, who just watches it happen or, or you know, who, who makes a donation realizes the amount of work and um, emotions that, that are that day, you know, except for the nonprofits that are, you know, up 24 hours really in the trenches together. Um, so I think that that camaraderie um, is, is really important in helping them foster that throughout the year. Um, you know, there's of course competition. There's, I, I call it friendly competition. Um, but in the heart of it, like once we're through that day, we kind of look at each other like we really shared something there. Like we really, that was, you know, it, it was something. You go through something tough. Um, and, uh, but it, you know, it's just, uh, it's so emotional and it's so gratifying and fulfilling um, and exciting. And it's just, it's a lot. So, um, you know, we, we really encourage them to get to know each other um, and to know who they're sort of in the trenches with, I guess. That's wonderful. Thanks for thanks for talking a bit about that and for um, yeah sharing that message. I think it's really inspiring, and I hope our listeners um, are able to take that and apply it to their giving day and find um, find more success through it. Uh, before we close, I would like to thank Megan for sharing her giving day experience with us all, um, and for Kelsey for being here on the podcast um, to, ch to chat with Megan as well. It was inspiring to hear about Give Local York and how they were able to hold a successful in-person event that allowed virtual attendees to join in on the fun too. I'm sure that our listeners will be excited to implement some of those strategies for their next giving day or fundraising event. If you're looking for more tools like this to take your digital fundraising to the next level, please visit our resource library to stay up to date with our podcast, webinars, downloadable content, and more at info.givegab.com resources. Thanks so much. Have a great day.